Welcome to our online lecture number three, Searching the Web. The first thing we'll talk about are search engines. Search engines are programs written to run on browsers like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. They are made to search a vast database of information which has been obtained by these companies that contains uh, information on the web for whatever you may be searching on. And I have to keep in mind that the internet is a, a very huge place now and the database required to run something like uh, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge is absolutely immense. And then we'll talk about also uh, how this is done. How do they obtain the information? Also, there are quite a few uh, different search engines out there, but the three top most popular search engines currently are Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Google, of course, is the well-known Google company who also wrote Chrome. Bing is a Microsoft company, and Yahoo, which you probably heard of, has also been around for quite some time. In fact, they had one of the earlier search engines. The top search engine as of today is uh, Google. So you're probably wondering how do these search engines obtain this information? What they have, uh, first of all, uh, is very complex algorithms that uh, perform searches and rank results that you search on. So these vast databases uh, contain a very complex program. Companies like Google are currently using forms of AI or artificial intelligence to do these searches. So now how do they actually obtain this information? The actual data for these searches is obtained by something called web crawlers, which are actually autonomous programs that seek out web pages they haven't seen before and gather information about those web pages. So they're autonomous, which means they run by themselves uh, on a server and they're out there constantly looking for new information that's out on the internet that has recently appeared. The things that they look for are keywords and page rankings, update frequencies, inbound and outbound hyperlinks, which means connections to other web pages, number of people visiting it, and topics. These web crawlers are also known as bots or spiders. So these programs are out on the internet all the time gathering information for the search engines and the companies that run them. Another important feature of websites that are basically hidden is something called meta tags. These are small lines of text that briefly describe the content of a web page. And they don't appear on the page, although there are ways to find them. But the web crawlers or bots do see them and they gather that information. So that's one of the uh, main sources of search information is what appears in these meta tags. Now I'm going to uh, demonstrate a way to uh, find one of these meta tags right now. In this video, I have done a Google search on Barnes & Noble Bookstore. And once I bring that uh, site up, if I go to uh, create a bookmark for that, you'll notice that the bookmark contains some information, in this case, online bookstores, Nook, eBooks, music, movies, and toys. And that is before the actual name Barnes & Noble. This is, in fact, uh, a meta tag. This is one of the places that meta tags appear. The next thing we're going to talk about is the search process. Now, in our lecture, we have a five-step process, and uh, we're going to use that to refer to how we're performing our searches. 
The first uh, part of the process, step one, is to choose the best search tool. As you'll see, in some cases there are better search tools than others, depending on what you are looking for. Uh, and two, formulate the search query. We will be using uh, Google Chrome and the Google search engine to formulate some search queries in uh, this lecture and in our lab. And you'll see how that works. Of course, the next step is perform the search and then examine the results. And the fifth step, not everyone does, and that is actually important to evaluate the credibility of the results. So we're going to be looking at that as well. The next thing we're going to look at is the actual formulation of search queries. Now, most of the time when you go on a search engine, you probably type a keyword in that you want to look for and hit enter, and it will find some uh, matches for that. But there are some more advanced methods to track down uh, items that you're looking for. So one of our first terms is keywords. Of course, a keyword is a word that you are searching specifically on. Now, of course, the fewer keywords you have, the less uh, specific your results are going to be. When we look at advanced search operators, uh, those allow us to change the search parameters to be much more specific about what we're looking for. In Google, you can use the OR operator to specify optional keywords, double quotes for specific phrases, the minus sign to exclude a keyword, and two dots to specify numeric ranges, and we'll have a demonstration of all of that. Of course, you can use any combination of those, and this will be under advanced search forms. For our first search uh, demonstration here, I am going to be looking for Pontiac GTO, which was a vehicle made in the late 60s, early 70s, and in the early 2000s. Now notice how uh, I have obtained a list of just about everything, and I've gone under Settings and Advanced Search. First thing I'm doing is moving Pontiac GTO to an exact word or phrase, and then I am putting the years that it was manufactured in the 2000s, 2004 to 2006. And that now has limited to the later model GTOs and not the ones from the 60s and 70s. If you look up on top uh, next to Google, you'll see what it has generated here. So Pontiac GTOs in double quotes and then the year with two dots in between, and those are just separated by spaces. So you could actually type that in there directly if you wanted to, instead of using the advanced settings screen. Okay, on this next search, I am going to look for information on Avengers movies from the Marvel universe. And of course, if you type that in, you're going to get quite a few uh, hits on all sorts of things since they make quite a few movies. I am now going to go to advanced search, and I'm going to look for two specific characters from the Avengers movies, and I'm going to put that in the any of these words section. Note that I am putting them in quotes because there is more than one word in the characters' names. Also, not necessary to put the word or between them. You can simply type them, uh, since they have uh, double quotes around them, you can type them without the word or. Also, in none of these words, I put the character Thor. So when I run this search, what you're going to get is any sites that mention those two characters, but not the Thor character. So that will not be in any of these. Now take a look at the text that I created here. Avengers movie with Black Widow and Captain America in double quotes and an or, and then the minus sign in front of Thor. That means that it will exclude anything with that word Thor in it, but will include anything with Black Widow or Captain America. So now that we've learned how to do our searches using the advanced scripting, let's take a look at the results. What you're going to see, now this is specifically in the, the Google uh, search engine, you're going to see a number of different things. Top results, number of hits. Now keep in mind a hit is any time 
it matches a web page to your search parameters that you entered. Sponsored results usually float to the top because those are paid ads. Web, uh, web pages always have a title and a description. And then Google also, of course, incorporates other items. People also search for local results. People also ask sections and related searches. In addition to that, of course, we also now have different media types offered, web, image, videos, news, etc. And that is another feature of the Google search engine where it breaks it up into different types of uh, hits that you got from your web search. So let's go ahead and do a web search for realtors and see what we get on the Google search engine. Notice on top, uh, the paid ads show up first. They're probably paying quite a bit to get that on there. Uh, also, the people also search for is showing second, similar searches. Then going down, we finally see the top hit. So this is not paid, but this is just a number one hit that would be there regardless. Then the section where people, uh, other types of searches or questions people ask. Continuing on through ads and top uh, hits, we see related searches. And then on top, notice how many search results or hits were obtained. Also tells you how fast it did the search. And then right under the keywords that you typed, there are different types of search results. Maps, for example, will bring up local realtors on a map, Google Maps in this case. News, of course, this is any realtors or news stories about them. Images has pictures and other things relating to that. And also shopping, of course. So next, uh, we've done our search. We had this information. How do we evaluate the credibility of these results? Unfortunately, many people believe anything they read on the internet. Of course, that can be very dangerous, particularly if you're looking at uh, purchasing something through the internet. I've seen many people uh, get ripped off that way, uh, purchasing things without really doing uh, the proper research on the website. So these are some tips of uh, how to go about doing that. First of all, authority. Uh, is this the primary source for this information? Uh, is whoever wrote this a noted authority? And is this information up to date? So this is not necessarily pertain to a uh, e-business type of site, but more of an article of something of that nature. Objectivity then, is it an objective website or is it sponsored? Because if it is sponsored, it's always going to lean towards whoever's sponsoring it, whatever that may product may be. Also, scope. What is the audience for this? Is it meant for a general audience or is it meant for specific people with specific uh, agendas? How does it compare to other sources as well? Don't just do one search or look at one site. Compare it to others. Design and functionality. A believable website is professionally designed and it's very functional. If you're looking at a website that is poorly designed, uh, doesn't have all the usual links and legal information you're used to seeing, probably isn't a good website. It means that it is not necessarily very credible and I certainly wouldn't recommend purchasing anything from them. So keep in mind, uh, particularly when you're looking at any sort of uh, monetary transaction, do your research before uh, going out and purchasing over uh, the web. One of the best sources of this information is simply uh, other people making complaints about the website. Very easy to find out there. So if you're not sure, uh, do a search on it. See if anyone's ever complained about the website. You may find out it's not even legitimate. But definitely, uh, whenever you're out there, whether you're looking for information or purchasing or anything of that nature, look at the credibility of the website. Don't just assume that anything they say is correct.
Now let's look at different types of search tools. Of course, the general search tools we've already mentioned, Google being Yahoo and so forth. But there are other search engines that are specific for different uses. For example, in business, there's Google My Business or Zoom Info. Jobs, of course, there's Monster, Indeed, and LinkedIn. For legal, Google Scholar, LexisNexis, and others. Medical, WebMD, Healthline. Maps, Google Maps, MapQuest, and question and answer, ask.com, eHow, wikiHow, answers.com. Now, particularly on those questions and answers, uh, search engines, that is one uh, place where you definitely want to check the credibility of that because anybody can answer these questions. Somebody puts uh, a post on ask.com, anyone can answer that. So it's up to you to evaluate the credibility of that answer. And as I said before, uh, do re enough research so you see that the answer has been repeated by different people with the same answer. That's usually one way to test that. Finally, we're going to look at something called meta search engines. A meta search engine is actually a search engine that searches other search engines and collects information. So it's kind of a level up from uh, just a regular search engine. It's taking advantage of all those databases and running the search on all of those simultaneously to give you a, a more comprehensive list of results. Some of these uh, search engines um, are specialized, as we're going to see. We're going to be using that uh, one on top called Kayak in our lab for this week. Other ones, uh, Surfwax, Dogpile, Mama, Car2, all meta search engines, and uh, many of those are used for different things, but occasionally they are helpful. You may get a wider variety of hits instead of using just one single search engine. You are, in fact, taking advantage of numerous uh, search algorithms that the different companies use to get these results, which do vary. This completes our presentation for lecture number three, Searching the Web. Be sure to watch our video on lecture number three, Lab. We'll be doing some uh, web searching exercises on that. Also, do not forget to complete the quiz uh, after watching this.